Mr. Barkley. Got that keg of beer? You bet I have. Nice and chill. Just right for the picnic. Good enough. Beats me where you get the muscle. From playing the pipes, boy. Say, have you heard from your brothers? Not a word. Spare a little? <laughs> What's the big occasion? Oh, a poker game. And a bloody one. Who's playing? Holiday Martinson. Is Spider Martinson. Local talisman trying to take him. Professional? I'm not sure. But I'll tell you this, he's too good for them fellas. Say, why don't you take him on? <laughs> That'll be the day. King, okay. nine, seven. I'll give you a hand with the keg. Wait a minute. Isn't that Jack Carpenter playing? Yeah. I'll get it in a minute. What's it to me? Two dollars. That is, if you want to play. I'll give you a marker. You sure you're good for the two dollars? Listen, you... You work around here? No. Maybe you own a few thousand acres of land? Are you making fun of me, mister? No. Just trying to find out whether you're good for two dollars. Anyone here can vouch for this man? No? No job, no money in the bank? Maybe you own a gold mine or a gold watch. I'll take any kind of collateral at all, mister. No collateral, no game. Anybody here wants to lend you two dollars, see you through this pot, you're in. If not, you're holding up the game. Let's see, that's two dollars to me, and I'll raise it five. you five more. Up another five. Call. What do you got? Two pair. King's high. It's your pot. Thanks for the game. We're only just beginning, Mr. Carpenter. Now, if the pikers are out, why don't you and I play a little real poker? I've had enough. Anybody else want to play? Easy's too sharp for me, anyway, but you're the best poker player in town. Whiskey. I'd like to play with the best poker player in town. Maybe some other time. No, no, wait, please. Don't sit down, mister. I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. Where's my... Clumsy, stupid... <laughs> Pretty hard. Got some place we can play? In the back. Grab yourself some feet. Nasty bump on the head, lad. I'd better send for a doctor. Don't worry, the doctor will be here soon. Why don't you sit down? He treats you that way all the time? No, not all the time. Do you have a good doctor here? Sure do. Banged heads are a specialty. Where are you from? Moria. Where's that? It's an island near Tahiti. I don't think I've heard of it. It has a reef, and you can hear the surf pounding on it all over the island. There are butterflies, and the beaches are black with black sand. There is a mountain in the center of the island with clouds around it in a circle. It is called La Couronne. Sounds nice. Yes. And it smells good, too. 
There are Chari Tahiti going all over the island. Chari. That's my name. Chari Fahri. And he's Barkley. Morrissey said it was an emergency. Well, I'm waiting for a baby to be born. You're lucky. If he'd hit his head an inch more to the right, the sheriff would be here instead of me. He was slapping the girl around. He has the right to. Nobody has that right. You're wrong. I belong to him. You mean you're his wife? No. He bought me. I'm his property. Oh. He's coming, too. Might be a good idea if he doesn't see you. How is he? He's coming around. Uh, it's good. I can't stand to have anybody dying on my property. You know, it's against my policy, but I'm about to buy a drink on the house. Oh, Mrs. Barkley. Piper. Good day to you, ma'am. Keith, I'm glad I caught you before you left. This came for you. There's trouble at the mine. I say there's trouble. It's flooding. Where are we going to get $5,000 with the banks all closed? Well, that's the other reason I came. Piper, we need $5,000. 5,000? Now, where would I be getting that kind of money? You get it out of your safe. Safe? Are you? What safe? Oh, Piper, you've been in the loan business that I know of for the past five years. How much interest are you charging now? 15%? 20%? Now, what a thing to say. Piper, we need $5,000 now. But it would take away my working capital for the weekend. Suppose I get a run at the faro table. Sell some more beer. I'm sorry, Mrs. Barkley. There's nobody on earth I'd rather help than you, but I just... Piper, do you remember how we first met? <laughs> well, I don't think I know to what you're referring. Well, let me refresh your memory. When you first came to town, you needed money to buy this place. All right. See, you lent me a little money. A little? Well, maybe $1,500 doesn't seem a lot to you now, but it was a matter of life or death then, wasn't it? $5,000. Five thousand dollars. All right. I'll sell a little more beer. I checked. There's a train leaving in a few hours. It connects with the stage to Sally Rosa. Here's a change of clothes and your razor. Well, if I don't get there in time, I'll know what to do with the razor. <laughs> now, just take it easy. You'll be all right after a little rest. Yeah, thanks. Well, I must be off. But if you have any headaches or anything tomorrow, uh, you might stop by my office. Keep your hands off. What's the matter hit me? Here you are, Mrs. Barkley, 5,000. Uh, do you want to count it? Oh, that won't be difficult, sorry. I'll have the bank repay you first thing Monday morning. Uh, plus interest. Uh, yes, ma'am. Well, how about dinner before I catch the train? Good. We'll go to the hotel. I understand they have nice, fresh lobster. Get our stuff ready. We've got a train to catch. But the doctor said you should rest. That doctor doesn't know what's on that train with me. I wouldn't miss it if I had a broken leg. I wish to apologize for my behavior at our previous meeting. It's all right. I always forget. No, no. Boorish conduct is never really forgotten. It's merely excused. 
And that's the most I have the right to expect of you. How's your head? Better. You mind if we join you? Sit down, Thierry. I'll be right back. I'm going to scout up some cigars. The train goes so fast. 30 miles an hour. It beats walking. In Morea, if we were going this fast, we would soon find ourselves in the sea, swimming. In water so blue, so clear. What's the name of that place again? Morea? You miss it, don't you? Is your family there? Yes. All my fathers and all my mothers. All your fathers and mothers? Our ways are different from yours. When we are young, we have many fathers and many mothers. It's like an uncle is a father and an aunt is a mother. And one has many uncles and many aunts. And in every house, you're welcome. It's like having a family of many families. Where did you meet Martinson? My first father took me to Fiji two years ago. But he fell sick and died. And I had no way to go back to Tahiti. Martinson was working there. And when he went away, I went away with him. But not to Tahiti? No. Not to Tahiti. Care for a drink? No, thanks. Cigar? No. Find out when the club car opens. Paid fifty dollars for her in Fiji. Worth every cent of it. Why haven't you noticed? I'll give you a hundred. Oh, she's not for sale. Not yet, anyway. I don't want her for myself. Then why buy her? To send her home. I'll send her home myself. In due time. So, you're the best poker player in Stockton. People exaggerate. Sometimes. Might try a few hands, find out. Poker's a passion with me. No thanks. Didn't think you'd scare out. I don't. Then how about it? You will. Sooner or later, you will. Sally Rosa. Well, this is where I get off. This is where we get off. I didn't mention you were going to Sally Rosa. You didn't ask. Yes, Mr. Barkley, you're going to be sharing the pleasure of our company. Isn't he, Tiare? I'll get that. Thank you, Mr. Barkley. Well, we mustn't spoil her. She's frightened. I told her about the Indian massacre here, and she's been having nightmares ever since. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about that. No one's seen an unfriendly Indian in these parts for more than a year. Besides which, Mr. Barclay's a crack shot. He'll defend your honor, your scalp, and his $5,000. 
Come to think of it, better off losing that money to me than turning it over to those savages. You seem to be well informed. Don't worry, Mr. Barkley. I won't steal it from you. And you won't win it either. Everybody out. Dry wells. Miguel. Miguel. Say, si, senor. How about some food? If you want me to change the horses, I can't get the food. I'll change the horses. Then I'll get the food. Good. Today we have tamale pie. And tomorrow, too. Uh, por favor, siéntese. Uh, please sit down. Gracias. Uh, must have left my cigars on the stage. Excuse me. Got my cigars. So, well, we're gonna have to ride the horses back to the station. Be another coach along in the morning. That's too late. I gotta be in Sally Rosa tomorrow afternoon. Well, that's all right, Mr. Barkley. You're welcome to one of the horses. I appreciate it. Now, we'll be going along with Mr. Barkley. I have urgent business in Sally Rosa, too. Mister, with a little lady there, it's 40 miles from here. You'll have to bunk down tonight. The food is... Nothing but what you can catch. You know, that station ain't much, but it, it's bound to be more comfortable. Thanks, but uh, we'll keep Mr. Barkley company. That is, if you don't mind. No, not at all. Well, take what you want from your baggage. The rest will arrive by stage. We've got a few extra blankets if you need them. Ma'am, it ain't going to be no joyride. farther. 20, 25 miles. What time is your auction? Auction's at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, but I figure we can make Sally Rosa easy by noon. Oh. 
I'm sorry. Riding 20 miles without a saddle, you must be pretty tired. A little bit. Martinson, tie up those horses. Gather up some firewood. I'm going to see if I can scout out some dinner. Aye, aye, sir. But uh, just give me one moment, please. What's that for? Coffee. Go on, fill this up. We don't have any coffee. Man said take what you need from your baggage. Never travel without coffee, my own special blend. Go on, Terry. But the stream is so far away. That's two, three hundred yards back there. Go on, get going. W what if... Well, if any Indians show up, just invite them over for coffee. Martinson, you want your canteen filled up, you fill it up. All right, Barkley. You're in charge here. Well, if you're so scared, why don't you go along with him? She's going to stay right here and just rest. Is that all right? Well, I don't hold with it. Man treats you like a princess, you might wish he was your master. But I guess I'll just have to grin and bear it. Try to bring back a nice plump partridge, Barkley. I'll do that. Not exactly partridge, but uh, close, Barkley. Time close. Hmm. You eat much better in the wilderness than I expected. How'd you get them? Oh, good luck. Well, now, if you really feel lucky, uh, how about a little, uh... Not that lucky. All right. You didn't have to run down some apple pie for the coffee, did you? Sorry. And here I was about to dub you the perfect Western male. All right. I'll dub you uh, Sir Heath, the almost perfect Western male. Gives me something to shoot for. You know, Renaissance man made a virtue of thought. You people have made a virtue of self-sufficiency. Well, if we don't, we die. I know. And that's the most interesting thing of all. You know, I make my living by finding and knowing weaknesses in other men. You know, the one of the few I've ever met who doesn't seem to have any. Now, you don't seem to be concerned with any of the seven deadly sins. Yet, like all men, you must be vulnerable to something. Tell me, Barkley, what do you think your Achilles heel might be? Well, I get cold when the temperature drops below freezing. And yeah, it's dropping pretty fast right now. Better get some firewood. Oh, no, please. Allow me. You young people, uh, amuse yourselves. Well, we could do the dishes if we had any. <laughs> You're not like anyone I've ever met. I don't know whether that's a compliment or not, but thank you. Martinson says you're very rich. Rich? I guess you could say I'm rich. I got people that love me, people I love, nice home, and I like my work. I guess you could say I'm rich. Yes, people who love you, that makes you very rich. You'll go back to your family one day, I'm sure. These people who love you, one of them is a girl, is she not? One of them? Yes. A man such as you must have many girls. Are they prettier than me? Well, let's see. There's, there's Jennifer. She's very fair and very different from you. But prettier? I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing about Jennifer. She's not afraid of Indians. I'm not afraid of Indians. No? No. Well, you sure could have fooled me. Well, maybe a little bit. But not when you're here. Not now.
and Martin Sensu. Didn't strain yourself, did you? Well, it's pretty dark back there. Maybe we could bundle together, share some of our body warmth. Want to go get some more firewood? Well, for a minute there, I thought you and our young hero, Barkley, uh... Why didn't you let him kiss you? Why are you doing this? Doing what? Pushing you at him? Yes. Tiare, do you know what an Achilles heel is? No. Now you will, my sweet. You will. Mr. Barkley, and we'll go as nice and quiet as we come, with nobody hurt. Don't make any quick moves, Mr. Barkley. There's another gun looking down your back. Just hand me the money, nice and easy. Barkley! chance. Why? Oh, I didn't come all this way to see you lose that $5,000 or a couple of tin horn bandits. Thanks, Martinson. But if you think I owe you that poker game, you're wrong. I thought you might be the kind of man who'd repay one favor with another. But no matter. Like every good poker player, I may still have myself an ace in the hole. And the stage broke down. Mr. Beamer don't like to be kept waiting unless you got a mighty good excuse. Yes, I know. Mr. Thurman, this is Mr. Barkley. You've met Tiari. Let's get going, like I said. I know, I know. Mr. Beamer hates to be kept waiting. Well, he's just gonna have to wait a little while longer, at least until I've had a bath. I got a short bath, Martinson. Don't push your luck. Well, I guess I'd better get a receipt for these horses. Well, goodbye, Mr. Barkley. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Tiari. Tiari. I said, inside! I'm sorry, but there's no time left. You're my only chance. You. You're his Achilles heel. You, Tiari. My only hope is you. Sarah, 
What happened? Tell me what happened. Martinson, did he beat you? Well, you're gonna leave him now. No. I'm gonna put you on a stage for San Francisco. No. But you can't stay with him. But I can't leave him. I told you that. I'm his property. Where is he? I don't want you to fight. I don't intend to. Is he in his room? He went to the saloon. You go back in the hotel lobby and wait for me. It'll be all right, I promise. Getting up, Bartley. So you might just as well sit down. I'll buy her. Sit down and play. Three hundred. Nope. Name it. Five thousand. You rotten excuse for a. All right. I'll get it for you. Now. I need it now. I can't give you that money. You can't give it to me, but we can play for it. I told you once you'd play cards with me. If you beat me, she's yours. I'll put up Tiare for $5,000 worth of chips. Tomorrow. Hold off to tomorrow. There's no tomorrow, not for me, Barkley. If you want her, you'll play for her. And right now, you've got yourself a game. Up a hundred. Call. Six. Pair. Pair of fours. That's a hundred. A call. Pair of sevens. Fours. Oh, that was quick and easy. Try again. Deal. Deal. Jack bets. Worth every cent of five thousand dollars, huh? It's your bet. You think I should have let her starve in Fiji? Bet. Jack bets a hundred. Call.
Deuce. Ten. Jack Betts. One hundred dollars. Raise your hundred. Call. Nine. Pair of tens. Five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Pair of deuces. Queen, still my bet. So go ahead. Bet. Five hundred dollars. Your five hundred dollars. And another hundred. Your hundred dollars. Up five hundred dollars. Five hundred. Up another hundred. Call. Two pair. Jacks and deuces. Never bet when you're angry. Three hundred dollars. Fives bet. I'll bet the rest of it. Five hundred dollars. I'll see that. Three fives. Yeah. That's good enough. Maybe your luck has changed. Maybe it has. Deal. <laughs> Your name Gorman? That's right, Len Gorman. Jared Barkley. This is my brother Nick. How you doing? Nice meeting you. Got your telegraph. The pump goes up for sale first. Go on inside. We'll be starting things right on the dot. And just a minute, you wouldn't know offhand if our brother Heath Barkley's shown up. No, sir. Anybody who's showed up so far is local. Yeah, well, don't worry, Nick. He'll be here soon. Let's go inside and check that pump. Yeah. Let's see. That's, uh... 500. And 500 more. Well, I'll just see your 500. What do you have? Full house. Kings. Good hand. Darn good. Four deuces. Are you 
you stay with him. He won you fair and square. You stay with him. You in a hurry, Martinson? I thought I'd save you a little trip out to the ranch. You were coming out to the ranch, weren't you? I haven't got the money, Beamer. Oh? Well, that's a pity for you, that is. Because I'd much rather have the girl. So would you, wouldn't you? I haven't got the girl either. Oh. Well, that's even more of a pity. Because our deal was either you pay me the money or I get the girl. I don't believe you ever intended parting with her, did you? Did you, Martinson? I'll get you the money. Hold it! This is gonna be my pleasure. I'm gonna have to take this out of your hide. I'll win you the money. Just give me a chance. You're kind of lean. You don't have much meat on you, boy. <laughs> And that's about two dollars worth. I've got a lot more to go before I settle up with you, Martinson. <laughs> shake him up some. Perhaps. You're going to the auction with me, and after it's over, I'm going to take you back to Stockton. From there, I'm going to put you on a train to San Francisco. And then from there, you can get passage home. That's not a joke, Barkley. And like Beamer, they kill better men than me for welshing on gambling debts. So, uh, consider me lucky. Mr. Beamer, in San Francisco, that's when you lost money to him. And he said he would forget the money if yeah, you... Yeah, yeah, that's right. I couldn't give you up. Not to him. So that's why you wanted the money. You play a better game than I ever dreamed, Martinson. Thanks. But only winning counts. Listen, I'll take that hand now. I, I can make it all right now. Yes, I can take care of him. Thank you. That's what I figured. Away, Barkley. You go with him. No, I mean it, Barkley. One way or another, I pay my debts. Tell me, what should I do? Well, it's up to you to decide. You're free. But if it's him you want, you better get him before he falls down. 
You're a man with everything a girl would want. Martinson, he has nothing but me. Thank you very much for understanding. We're getting on the stage now, Mr. Martinson. Inside, gentlemen, the sale's starting. Uh, Mr. Gorman, I don't imagine you can manage the whole things up for a few minutes. I'm sure my brother will be... Sorry, here. gents, if it was up to me, but this is a government auction. All kinds of rules, and one of them is we gotta start on time. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, look, we got a mine that's flooding out. We need that pump. Now, we understand your problems, Mr. Gorman. Believe me, we do. But could you just hold the sale of the pump until last? I told you, this is a government auction. I gotta go by the catalog. Real sorry. Well, we tried. I guess we can just kiss that mine goodbye. Well, I'm gonna kiss that brother of ours. Oh, am I gonna kiss him? Well, here comes your chance. Peace. Not that we were getting worried, but another couple of minutes and... Where have you been? Oh, the stage broke down. Oh, that's very interesting. Did you bring the cash? Yeah. Honey, Yeah. Did you have any trouble getting it? No, no trouble. Heath. Yeah, be right there. See you over to Big New. Right away. What for? An old friend of his from Stockton just got into town. Heath Barkley. Heath Barkley? Yeah. Well, Pa didn't say anything about him coming to Jubilee. Well, I guess it's a surprise to him, too. Better get right on over there. That's the truth, Heath. That's right, only then it wasn't so funny. Oh, no, it wasn't funny then. No, no. Now when them desert rats were shooting at us from them rocks, he... Hey, Chad. Here he is now. Chad, come over here. Well, there he is. Heath Barkley. Told you he'd be riding into Jubilee one of these days. Heath is my boy, Chad. Glad to meet you, Chad. Mr. Barkley. <laughs> Mr. Barkley? This is Heath Barkley. He's like one of the family. We don't go Mr. and him, do we, Heath? That's right. <laughs> Yes, sir, I was just thinking the other day, well, you wasn't much older than Chad here when you signed up as my deputy at Spanish camp. Oh, I was telling Cy and Billy here about the time Heath and me went after the Simpson gang. <laughs> oh, Chad here, he sure gets a kick out of that story. <laughs> Sit down, Chad. Hey, Fred, another round. Oh, yes, sir, it's a big day for me. You two fellas finally meeting up after all these years. Sit down, Chad, will you? I, I can't, Pa. I gotta get a letter on the afternoon stage. Well, that can wait. No, it can't. Well, then you go mail your letter and just hightail it on back here. Uh, you gonna be in Jubilee long? Couple of days. Pa, I like that. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you look where you're going? I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, wait a minute. What about my chicken? 
<laughs> what about it? Get it down! I said, get it down! Now look, that bird's my supper. Stella's gonna fix me up a mess of fried chicken so you can just climb right up there and get it down. You're drunk. Oh, oh, oh maybe so. Maybe so. But I ain't had me so much to drink. I can't handle a big man like you. So if you ain't just wearing that gun belt to hold up your pants, you and me's gonna step outside. Excuse me. Stay out of this, cowboy. She hadn't taken a hand in this heat. Chad's been out here a year now. It's time he learned to take care of himself. Well, I best get him into a cell and him sleep it off. I got a feeling I've seen this Jasper before. Any of you boys know him? Well, sure does look familiar. Give me a hand. George? What do you need? Get settled at the hotel? Clerk asked me to bring you this. Belongs to your guest. Oh, he's still sleeping like a baby. It's coffee in the back if you want some. Thanks. Be right with you. Father mentioned some coffee. Help yourself. Frank's coffee, all right. Frank, ever tell you about the time his horse pulled up lame and he used some of it on his leg? Did the trick, too. Yeah, he told me. He's told me just about everything that ever happened to you two. Knowing Frank, probably more than once. You know, it's hard to believe. What's that? You're the same boy that Frank used to talk about. How old were you when your mother took you back to Boston? Five, six years old? Six. I know he's a mighty happy man to have you back. It's all he's talked about for as long as I've known him. I can remember when I first worked for him, how he used to talk about maybe going back to Boston and trying to persuade your mother into coming back. Well, he never quite made it. <clears throat> Probably because he knew it wouldn't have done any good. Oh, he was right. Wild horses couldn't have dragged Mother back. She hated this country. Everything about it, right up until she died. She just didn't belong here. A lot of people don't. She said, I didn't either. I 
After what happened in the saloon, I wouldn't be surprised if you agreed. That didn't mean anything. That's right. I didn't back off from that drunk because I was scared. I just don't happen to believe in getting into a gunfight because of a stupid thing like a chicken. Nobody's going to blame you for that. Oh, aren't they? Heath, come here. Read this. The drunk? Earl Vaughn. I knew I'd seen him somewhere before. Who's Earl Vaughn? The Vaughn gang, Floyd and his brother Earl. Floyd bosses the outfit. Thought they were operating over in Nevada. Well, they're in California now. Eastways Earl is. And if he's here, Floyd and the rest of the gang can't be far away. You better get ready for a lot of trouble, Frank. Like Gold Ridge? Maybe. What's Gold Ridge? It's a little town in Mono County. One of the Vaughn gang got arrested. Floyd and his brother Earl busted him out. They killed four men. Before they rode out, they set fire to the town and burned it down, or most of it anyway. And five more people died. Yes, Mr. Morrison? Old Floyd's gonna be expecting me to meet him and the boys up in them hills tomorrow. And if I don't... <laughs> you, uh... You remember Gold Ridge, Marshal? I remember. Good. <laughs> Good. Huh. Seem bad job. Keep feeding me like this, you can make me sorry to leave this here deal of yours. That'll be in the morning. In the morning. I'm taking you to the county jail in Stockton. That's so. Just can't trust this here cracker box of yours, huh? <laughs> huh. Well, I can't say as I blame you, Marshal. Seems to me this here place wouldn't hardly make a first-class bonfire. Marshal, you a smart man. You know old Floyd ain't gonna let you take me to Stockton. He rides in here tomorrow looking for me, and he don't find me. He's coming after you. Him and the boys, six of them. And what's gonna happen is, you're gonna wind up unnecessarily dead. You know what I'd do if I was you, Marshal? You'd let Earl Vaughn go. <laughs> You guess, Marshal. Finish your supper. Hear all of that? How many men are going with you? I gotta leave my deputy in charge of things here. I guess it's just me and Chad. Chad? Well, he's gotta get his feet wet sometime. May as well be now. Well, maybe so. But... Oh, I wouldn't worry about Chad. He's young and he's green, but he'll learn. Sometimes he seems like he's all left feet and thumbs, but he'll learn. I learned you a trick or two, didn't I? Yep. <laughs> That's what I told Chad. I learned heat and I can learn hit. Chad's a sawyer. I know the stuff he's got in him. He'll learn. Well, I gotta get to the telegraph office before it closes. I have to notify Sheriff Lathrop I'm bringing Earl in. As long as I'm heading back to Stockton, you don't mind if I ride along with you, do you? Why, that you had business in Sonora. Well, I changed my mind. Got to get back home. I guess I should give you an argument, but I ain't gonna. I'd feel a lot better if you came along. Thanks. I'll send that telegram. It's gonna be like old times, you and me riding together again. That's right. Sonny's all yours. Better watch it, Sonny. Horse of mine's used to taking orders from a man. Hold on, boy. Hey, just have a little fun, Marshal. You should too. Why, you still got to die. Yeah! Hey, you there! You tell old Floyd to 
comes up to me to bring him vital, you hear me? Oh, another thing. You folks give these here nice people a beer, and you hear me? And I'll be back to check. You can just bet your sweet life I'll be back. Say, if Gordon wants to buy that herd for $10 a head, we sell them to him. I suppose you'd tell me why when you can get $15 a head in Virginia City? But the cattle are here, not in Virginia City. And do you know how much it would cost to ship them? Good morning, Mother. Good morning, Mother. Good morning. Nick, who said anything about shipping them over? We'll drive them over. And do you know how much that will cost this time of year with no water and no grass? Approximately $5 a mile, maybe six. Well, if you don't believe me, you figure it out. I will do just exactly that. Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning, Mrs. Come Barkley. in, come in. Thank you. Hello, Jared. Nick. Good morning. Sheriff. Comes to approximately $1,500. There goes the profit. Not necessarily. What do you Nick mean, Jared? Nick, Jared. Oh, sorry, Sheriff. Well, if I'm interrupting something... You are, and I couldn't be more grateful. They've been arguing for over an hour about what to do with a few head of cattle. May I get you some coffee? Oh, no thanks, Miss Barkley. The reason I stopped is that uh, I had a telegram waiting for me in the office this morning. It's from the town marshal up in Jubilee. Frank Sawyer? Yes. There's something wrong. Well, no, not exactly. What's that mean? Well, Sawyer arrested Earl Vaughn in Jubilee yesterday. <whistles> That's quite a catch. He's bringing him into Stockton, and Heath is with him. Heath? Well, he was supposed to go on to Sonora. Well, all I know is what Sawyer's telegram said. Anyways, I'm riding out to meet him, just in case there's any trouble. And I figured maybe you'd like to come along. Sheriff, you figured just exactly right. You give us five minutes. Come on, Chad. Let's get moving. Your pa's right, sonny. You ain't got no time to lollygag. Unless I miss my guess, old Floyd started looking for me already. Stay with the horses. Johnny, you come with me, Rake. Take the others, look things over. The hotel, the saloon. Come on. Look around. We don't want any trouble here, Vaughn. I get the feeling you've been expecting me. Why don't you and your men just mount up and ride off? We got nothing here you want. Where saw you? Well, he's still a marshal here, isn't he? He's away. Away where? To, uh, <clears throat> to Sonora. Well, what's your name? George Rhodes. Uh, well, I'll tell you why I'm here, Mr. Rhodes. You see, my brother Earl, he came in here yesterday to pick up some supplies for us, and, uh, well, he didn't come back when he should have. You know anything about it? No. What did Sawyer go to Sonora for? Oh, just business. Just business? Floyd, the marshal got him. I got it out of the bartender. Sawyer, Sawyer's son, and a guy named Barkley taken Earl into Stockton. Left out first thing this morning.
You shouldn't have lied to me, Mr. Rowe. say we take a break. What's the matter, Heath? You getting soft? Maybe. Chad, how you doing? All right. Heath wants to take a rest. How about you? Let's keep going. Want me to take it for a while? I'm all right. The kid's a demon for punishment, ain't he? <laughs> Pushing him pretty hard, Frank. He was his mama's boy in Boston for all those years. He's got a lot of catching up to do. Me. Well, how come he jumped you? What was you doing when you're supposed to be watching him? Can't you do nothing right just once, just one time? I'm sorry. You're lucky he ain't dead. It's lucky we all ain't dead. I guess if it wasn't for Heath, we would be. Thanks. Chad. But it's all right, boy. It's just the way you gotta learn. It's gonna be light soon. You go ahead and saddle the horses. Come on, boy. It's all right. Come on. I'll stir up the fire for some coffee. So that's it. That's what he was doing when he's supposed to be watching Earl. That's the stuff his mom made him learn. Something wrong with that, Frank? What do you mean? You just saw what was wrong with it. Well, I'm not so sure about it, Frank. You think it's all right for a grown boy to be messing with stuff like this? Frank. Well, I don't. Chad knows it. I've told him I never want to see him drawing any more pictures as long as I live. And so help me, he ain't gonna. I'll get some more wood for the fire. 
As soon as I get this fire out. Pretty mean sky coming up over those mountains. Yeah, it looks like a storm brewing. We're going to be riding right into it. Yeah, no way to get around it. Come on, let's go. See that? Doesn't look good. Could be snowed another thousand feet. I don't think we should try to make it through Wolf's Pass. Maybe not. Trail down through Limbo, about a mile ahead. We could take it, circle around through Harper's Cut. Stay low enough to miss any snow. It's a long way around. Might be a good idea. Floyd Bond's following us. He'll figure we use Wolf's Pass. You can take the high road, the low road, any road you want to, Marcia. You ain't gonna lose old Floyd. We'll go through Limbo. There can't be more than a couple of hours ahead. Aren't you, cowboy? Yeah. Yeah. Sit down. Oh, you know, the last time I was here, instead of a bunch of ugly men, I met me a cute little old redhead. Me and Floyd stay in this hotel up in one of them rooms. Looks like it still works. I'll get some wood, you get the grub. All right. Hey, Barkley. After, uh, what happened last night? Uh, you ain't gonna leave me alone with, uh, <laughs> with this, are you? Oh. Oh, he trusts you, boy. He trusts you. <laughs> yeah, that little red hit. I think she's staying right up in the room, right up the... You know, wait a second. You sit down here. Well, now, what's the matter, son? I'm just gonna stretch my legs a little. I told you to sit down. Did, didn't you? Well, uh, I suppose I know what are you gonna do about it. Ooh, now I wouldn't do that if I was you, Sonny. Oh, oh no. Oh, Floyd, he gonna be mad enough as it is now that find me with my hide full of hope. No, sir. I think he'd just turn you over his knee, take down your britches, and tan your backside some spare. Yeah, you tell him to sit down. I ain't got no guts, boy. <laughs> 
What's going on here? <laughs> well, not a thing, Marshal. I just fun in the boy little. He got all riled up. I swear you used to use a rattlesnake. Get up. Get up. Get up. Sit down. What'd you do? Let him bait you? Chad! Marshal, I'm giving you fair warning. You let that thing you call a son swing at me once more, just once more. And there won't be enough left to him to stick in the ground. Frank. Yeah, hit on him! 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 Hit on There's an old rule. Don't draw it unless you're ready to use it. I've got something else that belongs to you. I don't know much about things like that, but that looks pretty good to me. All right. I shouldn't be wasting my time with stuff like that. I'll bet you never did, did you? Now, what's that supposed to mean? Chad, get it off your chest. What? Whatever it is about me that's bothering you. Well, you don't bother me. Why should you? Let me see if I can guess. Ever since you've landed in Jubilee, all you've heard Frank talk about is Heath. Heath can do this, Heath can do that, Heath can do anything. And if it's something he can't do, then it must be something not worth doing. Right? From the minute I first saw Pa again, he made it very clear what he wanted for a son. And it wasn't a Chad Sawyer. He wanted another Heath Barkley. And apparently, you've decided if that's what he wants, then that's what you'll try and give him. Oh, yeah, go ahead and laugh. I'm not laughing. Yes, you are. And after what's happened, why not? I must look pretty silly to you. But someday, someday, I'm gonna make my pa forget he ever knew anybody named Heath Barkley. <laughs> Where do you figure they went? The short way, Wolf Pass. <laughs> Floyd? Take cover, lay pass. Right. Buckskin. He's the sheriff in Stockton. Must have come to meet Sawyer. Oh. Only he didn't meet him yet. Now that means Sawyer went by way of Limbo instead of Wolf Pass. and put them in that old livery stable across the street. Give you a hand? I can manage.
Sorry, I uh, shouldn't have tried to handle it alone. That's all right. Don't worry about it. How can I not worry about it? I bungle everything I do. I <laughs> can't seem to do anything right. Well, now that sketch I saw, that looked right. Well, now don't bring that up again. Why not? You know how Paul feels about it. Well, that's no answer. It doesn't mean anything. Back in Boston, yes, I wanted to be an artist to paint. At least I thought I did. But that's a whole different world. Maybe that's where you belong. Nobody asked you, Heath. Get out of here, Chad. Pa, I... Get out. Thought we was friends, Heath. Well, we still are, aren't we? Not when you go talking to Chad like that. Not when you go putting ideas in his head. I'm not putting head. ideas in his head. Well, don't tell me. I just heard what you said. Frank Chad already knows he doesn't belong out here. He does. And sooner or later, he's going to have to admit it. He's by flesh and blood. If he don't belong here, he don't belong nowhere. And you're going to have to admit it too, Frank. I, I thought you was my friend. Why are you talking like this? Because it's true. It is a lie. It is a lie, just like all the lies his ma told him. This country wasn't good enough for her. It wasn't nice and soft and easy and civilized enough. She hated it and she made Chad hate it. But she's dead. And he's here. And he's my boy. And I'm going to learn him how to be a man. Frank, Chad already is a man. Or he could be. Not your kind, not mine, maybe. But in his own way, just as much a man as either of us. Doing what? Drawing pictures. Being a namby-pamby, sissified picture painter. He's a sawyer. And he's going to be a real man. No, Frank. He's going to kill himself trying. Pa! Look! Wayne Floyd. <laughs> I told you! I, I told you! That Floyd's like a bloodhound! You ain't going to give him a slip! One more cackle out of you, and I'm going to blow your head into the next room. Smoke, coming from over there. Yeah. Sawyer's there. All right, you two, go to the side. You other two, cover the back. Rake, come with me.
I hear you. Turn out loose! We're right out of here and leave you alone! Like you left Gold Ridge alone? No deal, Vaughn. And if you rush us, Earl will be the first to get it. I'd squash him like I would a bug. He's bluffing. No. Not Sawyer, I know him. He means it. What'll we do? We got more of everything than they have. Men. Water. Food. Time. So we'll just wait them out. Stop his yelling. Well, it doesn't look too good. We should have come up on Heath and Sawyer by this time. Could be they didn't leave Jubilee yesterday morning after all. It could be they decided not to go through Wolf Pass and risk getting caught in a storm. Well, there's one way to find out. Sheriff, why don't you go on down through Jubilee, and Jared and I will take the trail back through Limbo and Harper's Cut. All right, I'll meet you at Forbes Station. All right. Anybody back there? I got a glimpse of three of them. Look, Frank, I've been thinking. If I can slip out, get around behind the livery stable, we can get Floyd caught in a crossfire. Then we have a chance of getting our horses and getting out of town. I guess we still think alike on a lot of things. Now, I was just upstairs. There's a trap door up there. I can get through that, down the next building or two, and circle around behind the stable, just like you say. You, Frank? Yeah, me. Earl's my prisoner. I'm still wearing this. It's my show. I'm the one that's going to go. Good luck. Thank you. Sure don't like all this waiting. Yeah, I don't like it, Ray. All you have to do is do it. What? <laughs> Something. Johnny, come with me.
Don't move, Sawyer. Not one little bit. You in the hotel. Listen to me. We got Sawyer. If he moves a finger, he's a dead man. Now, do you want us to kill him? Or do you want to talk sense? What do you want? You know what I want. Send Earl out. Send him out. I'll let Sawyer off the hook. If you don't, he's dead. Don't do it, Heath. I'm giving you five minutes to make up your mind. Don't do it, I'm telling you. Don't do it. Five minutes. I think I can pick them off from one of the rooms upstairs. No, no, there's two of them up there. If you don't get both of them, Paul will be killed. Then I better get them both in. It's too risky. He's not with it. Let's let him go. You heard Frank. He doesn't want that. I don't care what he wants. If Frank says fight, we fight. That's what he wants. That's the way it is in his kind of world. You didn't have to let him try to turn you into Heath Barkley or anybody else. You could have left. You had your own choice. You could have made your own world. But what you didn't have was the guts to make it. Now, if you don't want Frank to tell you how to live, then don't you try to tell him. Chad, listen to me. Putting me in jail ain't worth your paw getting killed. You know that. Let Barkley be a hero. He ain't got nothing to lose. Turn me loose. That way nobody gets hurt. And then you'll be the man your pa's always wanted you to be. Give me the keys, Chad. Think of your pa.
Chad. I'm all right, Paul. Oh, sure you are. Did you get him? With your help. Where the devil did you come from? Just be glad, brother. Don't know what brought you here, but I want to thank you, boys. Mighty glad to have been of service, Marshal. Let's get the horses. Thanks. Right. You did a pretty fair job yourself. When you get back on your feet, I got me a new deputy. I'd like to talk to you about that, Pa. Frank, I think this is one time you just better listen. All right. I'll listen. scaring him half to death. What are you doing here, out on point? I told Red Collins to take this position. Red Collins? How many times have I told you? You don't send a boy to do a man's job. I told him to go back, keep the Cogan company. Sam, I told you I didn't want you out here and watch it all tonight. The only reason you're here is... It's because I said I was coming. Now I'm here. I'm gonna stay here. Those wrestlers show up. I want the first crack at them. Sam, I've never been able to best you, have I? Go on, I'll be all right. Skunks come in tonight, they're gonna get a welcome they won't forget. If they come in tonight. Till now they've only hit a herd that's not been under guard. We got four herds in winter pasture. Can't watch them all. Nobody's criticizing. Just saying those wrestlers are smart as all. What gets me is they didn't even bother to run the steers out. They just killed them and butchered them right there. Why not? Butchered beef doesn't show any brands. Sam. Still got some life in them. Well, we gotta get him back to the house. Well, all right, I'll get the wagon. Oh, Nick, Nick, boy. I'm, I'm so Sam, sad. just don't talk. Don't talk, huh? Come on. I was going to. That's it. Oh. Just, just rest. That's it, Sam. Rest. They must have been close. Sam didn't have time to get a shot off. Maybe he could tell us. Maybe. If he lives.
I don't know, Victoria. The wounds are deep. Rosemary. Rosemary. That's his daughter. I'm afraid it'll be like this for a while. Chills one minute, burning up the next. Is there anything else we can do? You can see that he keeps warm. I'd like someone to stay with him through the night. He may have brief moments of consciousness. I'll stay with him, Mother. Good, Audra. I'll be back first thing in the morning. I'm sorry I can't be more encouraging. I know how close Sam is to all of you. We understand. Thank you, Doctor. He's been here on the ranch quite a while, hasn't he? Nineteen years, isn't it? Almost. I mean, I remember the first day he rode out here looking for work. My husband told him that we didn't hire drifters. Sam turned around and punched him. Said he was looking for work, not name-calling. What a man. <laughs> yes, he was. Victoria, uh, Sam's daughter. Is she the only family he has? Yes, she lives in Nevada. School teachers at a little place called Mesa. Why, Doctor? I wonder if it might not be wise to let her know about her father. Is it that serious? Nick, I just can't take the responsibility of having him die without seeing his only living relative. Well, doctor, Mesa's 400 miles from here. I can catch a train in the morning and be back the following day with Miss Williams. Do we have that much time? Nick, I can't promise anything. I'm sorry. Good night. Good night. I better see if Audra needs anything. I didn't want him out there. I didn't want him there. He's too old for fighting. Now, Nick, you can't blame yourself. You know what Sam is like once he's made up his mind or something? Look, I'll, uh, I'll drive you to the depot in the morning. I gotta go into town anyway to meet the sheriff. We're going out to the North Pasture to see if we can pick up those tracks. Jared, ever since I started running this ranch, Sam was the one man I could count on, I could turn to. He and I... If he dies, Nick... I know how you feel. Believe me, I do. I think we all feel the same about Sam. There's nothing we can do about it tonight. Now, come on, let's get some sleep. Come on, Nick. Hey, Jared! Nick! Morning, Walt. Morning, Walt. Any hey, words around town that Sam Williams got shot last night? That's right. Is it bad? Two slugs in the chest, close range. It seems like he's just in my store only yesterday, looking at some shirts. He's a nice old man. He sure is. Look, man, when you go after whoever done it, I'd be proud to ride with you. Well, thank you, Walt. Sure wish we knew who it was. He's been unconscious ever since it happened. You think he's got a chance? Well, we don't know yet, Walt. Nick's on his way up to Mesa now to bring his daughter down here. Seeing her may help. Well, I'll hope double on that. We'll let you know. Fine. trouble. He's still alive. Maryville, next stop. Okay, Good doctor. Yeah. What time are we pulling the Mesa? Oh, kind of time we're keeping today, I'd say about four o'clock. Four o'clock? Schedule says two o'clock. That's if we're lucky, which usually we ain't.
Anybody here? I'll be right there. Oh, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I was just getting ready to leave. Oh, well, I'm sorry too, ma'am. I was looking for the teacher. I mistake the teacher. Is there something I can do for you? Well, I, I hardly think so, ma'am. Uh, is there another school in town? Well, I'm afraid not. This is a very small place. Oh, well, maybe... Maybe she used to be a teacher. I mean, I mean, before you. Well, that would have to be some time ago. This has been my school for 22 years. But as I say to the children, the best place to start is at the beginning. Just whom did you expect to find here? Well, quite frankly, ma'am, I thought you were Miss Williams, Miss Rosemary Williams. I find that less than amusing, young man. Amusing? May I suggest that you confine your tasteless little jokes to those that can better appreciate them? Oh, no, ma'am. I, I wasn't... And may I also suggest that you leave at once, or I shall be forced to send for the marshal. Uh, yes, ma'am. Come in by train. It's as good a way as any if you gotta come here. Trouble? Well, I don't know. I wonder if you might help me find someone. Depends on who you want to find. Why? Oh, no, no, no. It's a girl, a girl by the name of Rosemary Williams. In that case, you don't have to say why. But across the street. Her over there. <laughs> so, so I said to him, Judge, you try to throw Rosemary Williams out of town and you're going to make history. You're going to be the first man was ever baptized with red eyes. <laughs> so he tried. And I hit him over the head with a bottle. Over here on the phone. <laughs> They was picking glass out of his head for three days. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, mister. Nobody's making you listen. Is your father Sam Williams? I'm busy. If, uh, if you're looking for a girl to drink with... I'm uh, looking for a girl to tell some bad news to. Well, tell it to somebody else. I don't want to hear it. Hey, we're out of liquor. Don't bother. I'll get it. Excuse me. Eddie, how about another bottle? Look, I came all the way from Stockton to tell you that your father's very badly hurt. So now you told me. Feel better? Two bullets in his chest. He may die. I only cry over coffee. Come back in the morning. In the morning, he may be dead. Now, I want you to go back to Stockton with me tonight. What? Oh, mister, you're funny. You really are. 
Even if I wanted to, you figure I got all that time to waste? Maybe a week? Do you know how much I make in a week? One hundred dollars, guaranteed. Hard money, gold. Weighed out on a scale. About time. I'll pay you a hundred dollars in advance. Thanks, I don't take tips. Well, maybe you'll take some advice. He's your father. And you're all the family he's got. If he dies and you're not there, only strangers are going to hear his last words. Miss Williams. Get this straight. No one is more of a stranger to me than my father. Here we are, gentlemen. Mike. Me. Me. Drink up. You're going back to Stockton with me? Mom, look. If I have to put you on my back, dump you on a train, and ship you out like freight, because I figure that's the cheapest way you can go. You heard what that lady said. Lady? Oh, I'm gonna kill myself. Come on. Let go of me! tips and I don't take favors. I don't give favors. I was thinking we talk a little business. Excuse me. It ain't hard to see why you was in a hurry. It sure is hard to believe that you'd come along just for the money. Hunter for my time, hunter for my trouble. Lady's gotta think of herself. I always thought a lady would think of her father. Was he the only one that got hit? Well, he was the nearest. That's how they got up so close. He must be getting old. He always used to have good eyes. He still has. He sees you in that dress. <laughs> well, you know, he does think you're a schoolmark. He's still making me up to suit himself. <laughs> he hasn't even seen me since I was ten. No? <laughs> right after Ma died. He just couldn't take it, I guess. He fell apart. Anyway, he stayed hard, solid drunk for a year. Until he took off. You mean he just left you? Mm -hmm. Oh, he'll tell you that he left me in good hands. The Kellers, real good hands. Especially Mr. Keller's, always grabbing. And Mrs. Keller, she got an able-bodied slave for room and board. For washing, scrubbing, cooking, weeding. And Mr. Keller. Mm. The saloon was paradise after that. Well, I didn't know anything about that. What's the difference? I don't even know why I'm telling you anyway. Doesn't mean anything to you. But Sam does. And I was hoping he might mean a little bit more to you. Oh, he means a lot to me, all right. I don't suppose I'll ever be able to repay him for all he's done. But who knows? Maybe. Just maybe. Well, uh, yeah, we should be pulling into Stockton sometime midday tomorrow. Well, I'll try to get some sleep. I'm used to doing without. Come on. 
mind. You're not in some saloon in May, so you know what's the matter with you anyway? Well, for one thing, I'm tired of waiting. Where's that brother of yours supposed to meet us? He'll be here, but in the meantime, would you at least try to look like a lady? Hmm? I said, in the meantime, would you at least try to look like a lady? Hmm. Mr. Bartley, I didn't think you were the type to notice a thing like that. Well, you never can tell about men, I guess. Better? Who? Oh. Sorry, I'm late, Nick. But I got delayed over at the sheriff's office. Looks like we got a line on those rustlers. We found some wagon tracks down below the point and some ice. Ice? Yep. Yeah. Well, that's why they didn't try to sell our beef in town. Looks like they've been butchering it right on the spot, icing it down and shipping it out. Any idea where? Yeah, I... Say, Nick, that girl over there, that isn't a school marm from Mesa. Sam got any idea? I'm sure he doesn't. Well, he shouldn't see her looking like that. He won't, I guarantee that. He won't. Would you, uh, like to meet her? By all means. Miss Rosemary Williams, my brother Jared. Miss? Sir? You'll be pleased to know your father's stronger this morning. As a matter of fact, the doctor's beginning to have hope. Yes, well... Nick, the sheriff and I are riding over to Clay Springs. I'd better be on my way. Clay Springs? Yeah, that's over in Minton County. He thinks maybe the rustlers may be shipping our cattle over there. Oh, any particular reason? Only that they've just had a siege of anthrax. <coughs> Force the price of beef sky high. I'll probably be back sometime tomorrow. A pleasure, miss. Nick. Pleasure, huh? A little more of a surprise, I'd say, wouldn't you, Mr. Barkley? Come on, Miss Williams. This is real nice, Barkley. Come on. Watch your step. Put her away now. I won't need her. around here are your father's work. Well, let's go and meet the rest of the family. Nick, 
I was beginning to get worried. What happened? Didn't you find Rosemary? Uh, I'm Rosemary Williams. Oh. Oh, so you're Sam's daughter. Well, I'm Victoria Barclay, and I'm so glad you could come. No use wasting $200. 100 for a time, 100 for a trouble. I see. Well, you must be tired after your long trip. Please, sit down. Nick! Oh, Nick, I'm so glad you got here. Audra. Oh, um... Audra, this is Mr. Williams' daughter, Rosemary, and this is my daughter, Audra. How are you? How do you do? I, I'm so glad you were able to come. Where is he? Upstairs in the guest room. You want me to go up now? Just as soon as you change. Oh, yes, of course, you... You'll want to change after that long, dusty trip. Well, I only brought the one dress. I didn't count on being here long. Well, that won't make any difference. Audra can loan you something. Audra, would you please take Rosemary to her room? Surely, this way. School teacher? Saloon girl. I don't understand, Nick. Rosemary Williams, a, a saloon girl, and wanting money to visit her own father. Well, Sam hasn't seen her since she was 10 years old, and all this school teacher talk is all a, well, it's a part of Sam's dream. I don't think it was such a good idea bringing her here. If Sam ever finds out... He won't. I guarantee that he won't. I paid that girl $200 so that Sam could keep his dream. And that should be enough for her. I hope you're right, Nick. So do I. I'm sure either of these will fit. You can take your pick. Well, thanks. I don't wear anybody's hand-me-downs. I had enough of that growing up. Well, I hope you're not offended. Oh, no, no offense. I just don't wear hand-me-downs, that's all. You have lovely hair, Rosemary. Have you ever thought of wearing it down? I like it up. about ready. Oh, pretty near. Well, you better hurry up and change. Don't tell him how long your father's going to be conscious. I told you, I only brought one dress. Well, what about... What about Audra's dresses here? All on my own. I'm ready. Uh -uh. Not like that, you're not... Like this, or I don't go at all. What's the matter with you? Your father's a very sick I man. I never and... begged to come here. It seems to me it was your idea. You listen to me, and you listen good. Nick, it doesn't matter. Sam's unconscious again. What's the matter, Marv? You lose a lot at the poker table tonight? I was at the saloon. Some of the hands from the Barkley Ranch come over to the table to play. Now, ease up, boy. Ease up. You're shaking all over. Now, just tell me what happened, huh? I got to ask him one of them about the old man. Said I was a friend of his from Nevada. And? He said the doc was out this morning. Heard him tell Mrs. Barkley Williams was doing real good. told her that the longer he lasts, the better chance he had of living. I see. Well, 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 now. It's up, old coyote, isn't it? What are we going to do? Do? If he lives. I think tomorrow morning, we ought to pay Sam Williams a visit. Oh. You're trying to break into that house. We're taking a chance. <laughs> Don't have to break in to visit a sick friend. Do we, Marv? Oh, good morning. I'm in sort of a hurry. I know, I know you're late, but that horse has got to be watered. Are you going to be gone long? 
Oh, probably all day. Nick, I'm sorry I can't stay. I, I know with Heath gone, you've got all you can do besides taking care of Mr. William. No, I, I think I can manage, Audra. Besides, it might be best if you were away. You seem to rile up Miss Williams quite a bit, you know. Well, look, don't think she's driving me out. It's just that I have a lot of appointments to keep. All right. She doesn't want to help him, does she? I don't know, sis. Doesn't seem that way, does it? I'll see you later, huh? buggy hitched and figured you were planning to take me back, so I thought I'd enjoy as much of the countryside as I could, while I could. Are you planning to take me back? Not a chance. Figuring on you to pull Sam through, you know. You don't give up easy, do you? No, no. Hmm. So a little Miss Proper leaving, afraid I might poison her? <laughs> Miss Williams, I think you got Audra all wrong. She's only trying to help. What do you mean? Well, Audra's a woman, not much younger than yourself, you know, and she's trying to put herself in your place, trying to make things as easy and as comfortable as possible for you. Well, you tell her for me not to worry. Having your $200 has made this whole thing easy and comfortable enough. Money sure means a whole lot to you, doesn't it? Only thing I know keeps the cold world from calling somebody like me, hey, you. Well, this is one thing we don't have in a saloon. Well, you don't have to go back to the saloon, you know. Sure. Be a lot of men in Mesa just looking to marry you. Mm. Two bit cow hands, four bit miners. Their chins in red eye talk a 19th of a dozen. Well, no, maybe they weren't as drunk as you thought. Maybe they were just uh, afraid of being turned down. You know something? Scrape off some of that war paint, you might find a very pretty girl underneath it all. No, you wouldn't. You know why? Because hmm. of that old man up there. One that means so much to you. One that's so special to all you Barclays. See this? That was him 20 years ago. I've been carrying it around a long time. I used to look at this every night before I went to bed. Just to remind me fresh of who was responsible for me being what I am. I used to promise myself I'd make him pay. Well, the last couple of years, I started to forget. It got numb, I guess. And just like that, you pop up, offer me $200. I said to myself, why should I let an old hurt rob me of $200? So here I am. I'm sorry I came. Is that the only reason you've been wearing that locket? The only reason. Did you ever stop to think that maybe Sam paid a thousand times of his mistakes? You know, I... I remember nights walking into the bunkhouse and all the other boys would be in town. Sam would be sitting there on the bunk thinking. So deep in thought that a herd of stampeding cattle wouldn't shake him loose. And there'd be other times we'd be out on night watch together, just Sam and I, and we'd be 
sitting around just talking, and all of a sudden my voice would be the only voice you could hear. I'd look over at Sam and say, Sam, something bothering you? Sam would say, a couple of things, a couple of things. And that's all it'd be to that. You know, there's nothing worse than a man living alone with his past that he's sorry for. Maybe you better take me back, Barkley. If you think you're going to soft talk me out of what I feel, you're wrong. Oh, now listen. That company. Morning, Nick. Hello, Walt. What are you doing out here? This is Marv Bayless, old friend of Sam's from Nevada. We was just wondering if maybe we could visit with him. Oh, I'm sorry. Doctor's orders. No visitors. Oh. Got to go by the dock, I guess. We can come back again. Assuming he's going to make it, of course. Well, we'll do our best. Uh, no need to mention we was by. We'd, uh, we'd kind of like to surprise him if we could. I won't. Nick? He's got one surprise coming already. Even here till you do. You're gonna see what I am. You're gonna know what you've done. Maybe you get to know yourself. Know that you're mean and low and empty. A man never cared nothing, only for himself. All right. Maybe when Ma died, you needed someone. Well, so did I. You didn't care nothing about that. You found your friend in a bottle. Left me to find my own way. Well, I found it all right. You know when I started? When I was 15. If you live, old man, you're going to think about that. Try telling somebody else I don't have to take orders from you're you. You're taking my money. You're taking my orders as long as you're living in my house. Listen, you. I am just as good as anybody in this place. And that goes for your mother and your sister, too. How long has it been since you're taking a real good look at yourself, huh? How long has it been? Don't you dare talk to me down that long, barkly nose of yours. There's men come 50 miles just to dance with me. Well, this is no saloon in Mesa. This is my home, and your father is not going to see you dressed like that. So you're going to change that dress right now, Rosie. Nick! Nick! Nick, I thought I heard something. Who was it? Now, you just take it easy, Sam. Just lay back there and rest. Everything's under control. I'll be right back. Nick, hey.
I just say it's too risky. Better have some of the men do it. No. We've got to do it ourselves. Now we do it right, he just stops breathing, that's all. Even a doc will think he took a bad turn. Listen, we still got to get into the house. We go back when it gets dark, that's all. Can't watch him all night. Now, come on. Let's go. Trouble. Oh. Miss, you need any help? I need a lot of help, mister. I think he's hurt bad, do you? Uh, it's just a cut, is all. He always did have a hard head. If there's anything I can do to help. Oh, no, thank you. I'm almost finished. Well, maybe I better go upstairs and change my dress. I expect it's high time anyway. Here, hold this on your head and I'll cut some bandages. Meter hadn't brought him in. Meter, has he been out this way? Yeah, he dropped by to see Sam. Seems they're good friends. It seems they're very good friends, Nick. They've been stealing our beef together. Sam? Come on, Jared, that's it. Now, I'm only telling you what I found out in Clay Springs. Meter's been selling fresh cut beef up there with Barclay Bills of Sale. Signed by Sam Williams. That's why I wanted to take the point that night, Nick, to warn him off. Where did Meter go from here? Well, he didn't. He's still here. He wanted coffee, so... Silas, those men still out in the kitchen? No, sir. They just went upstairs. Upstairs? Said they were friends of Mr. Williams. I took them to his room. Make sure Rosemary stays in her room. Barclay's just got lucky, huh? Just picked the right place and the right night to jump us, huh? That's the truth, and, and I was hoping to warn you. Except you come up too sudden. You uh, tell him that too? I wouldn't do that, Walt. I wouldn't. Even did they ask. No, they won't. They won't. <laughs> Hold it! Oh, 
Dan, you all right? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Jared rode into Clay Springs today. Get him out of here. Beef. What are you doing? What are you saying? Just a minute, Rosemary. Well, you're calling him a thief. He almost died for you out there. You were out there to warn him off, weren't you? That's a lie. Sam? That's the truth, Rosemary. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh. Rosemary, a couple of years ago, I went up to Mesa. I stopped at the saloon and I seen you there. But you didn't see me. That was why I listened to Walt. For two solid years, I've been on fire, hoping to put five or six hundred dollars together, maybe get a few head, make a start for myself. Maybe get her out of that place. So she could be like I always wanted her to be. You should have come to me. You should have told me. Well, it was the shame of it, I guess. For me. For me, not for you. Knowing it was my fault. I always wanted the best for you, Rosemary, and now... Now I can't give you nothing. You just give me all I ever wanted. I know that... There's no way of paying back what you've done for us, but I have a little money saved, and I'd like to pay you back what you lost. I don't think this is the right time to talk about business. Pressing the charges in case I didn't say it before. You said it before, Rosemary. I'm gonna miss this place, Nick. Well, now there's no reason for you to go so soon, is there? Mm, Pa's strong enough now. And I gotta get back. To the saloon? One of them cow hands. He's been asking, and well, maybe he wasn't so drunk after all. Look, we may have to start small, so it will take a while to get you paid off. I'll tell you what, if you miss one payment, I'm going to have to come up there and collect it myself. Be nice to see you. Anytime. Well, uh, uh, what's this? Can't let a lady tote her own bag, now can I?
Herman? Stay with it, Sarah. That mule hadn't got a chance. He? He? Is that you? Really? Well, why not? <laughs> where did you come from? I mean, how in the world... Did I know where to find you? Yes. Well, I asked the right questions. I heard you were doing mission work in this part of the country. And I managed to have business with the Roberts family. It's good to see you, Heath. It's wonderful, really. Your uh, sister Jacob now. Sister Jacob, that's a, that's a funny name for a girl. <laughs> oh, I've always thought it was a fine old biblical name. Of course, if you don't like Jacob, you have to take that up with Isaac. Of course, if you don't like Isaac, you have to take it up with Abraham. And if you don't, it gets very complicated after that. So you're chasing. Oh, oh, my God. Come on now. What was that for? No need to spell it out to you, Barkley. You know what that's for. I ought to use a gun on oh, you. Homer. Let's keep it legal the way we agreed. You're under arrest. For what? For assaulting my daughter. Are you listening to me? Listening to you? How can I help it? I'm entitled to face that girl, and you know it. I heard you the first four or five times. Well, then why hasn't she been brought here? Are you serious? Carla Roberts, brought from her father's house to face a wild-eyed rooster like you? Uh-huh. You've got a lot to learn, friend. You'll have a chance to face Carla at your trial. And if this is some kind of a joke, I'll laugh some other time. Mr. Barkley, you are now in Robertsville. You are not back in Stockton with your family to take charge of things for you. Something you just have to get used to. Now, is there anything else? I want to send a telegram. Get your piece of paper. No, I, I don't mean to say that Heath was ever saintly. Such a lie might bring the roof down on our heads. <laughs> but it, he was wild. He was, he was unruly and... Like so many of the others, he, he was even willful at times. Thank you. But he was, um, he, he was... <clears throat> this is very difficult to say, sister. Yes, sister. He was never disrespectful in the way that they're trying to suggest. How long has it been since you last saw him? Four years. Four years? Oh, my. That's almost forever when you're young. Men change, you know. The world and the people in it, our poor selves included, are so rarely what we once hoped we might be. Yes, I, I understand that. But just the same, I, I don't believe that Carla Roberts is telling the truth. And I don't mean that's something that I can prove, but I mean, I just know it. I feel it. That just isn't something that Heath would do. Let's try to be realistic. How well did you know this young man? Well enough to have married him if I hadn't chosen to become a nun. I see. Sister, you'd have to have known Heath to, to understand. I mean, he... he 
he was wild and he was headstrong and he, and sometimes he felt like he belonged to no one. And of course, those were the times when he, he was most lost. But he, he was always gentle and almost unspeakably brave. Are you sure he couldn't have done this? Oh, yes, sister. I'm absolutely sure he couldn't have done it. Please, may I have your permission to go see him in the jail tomorrow? Oh, do you think it's wise? <laughs> well, no, I'm not sure of that at all, but under the present situation with his family, a two or three day journey away, I, I think someone should be there with him. All right. Take Sister Martha with you. Thank you. I won't be long, Sister. I'd like to see Mr. Barclay, please. Oh. Well, if you're going to pray for this young fellow, it might be a good idea to get an early start. Uh, what do you have in the basket? Some lunch. You do that frequently for prisoners, you know. Well, I wasn't looking for an argument. Just ten minutes now, please, sister. Thank you. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Hugh. I might have known you'd come. <laughs> Why would not? Would you sit down? Thank you. Bad luck. First of all, I want you to know that what she said wasn't true. I was a guest at the Roberts house, and I talked to her, but that was all. I don't know why she would say something like that. Except, Sarah, do you know Carla Roberts? Uh, yeah, I've seen her in town a few times. Would you say there was something, well, strange about her? I think that we're all strange sometimes. Well, yesterday, I rode out to the stables to look at some horses I came to buy. And don't ask me how she got there, or what she was doing there, but it was Carla. She, uh, she asked me to look at some saddles in the tack room. And I said, yeah, I'd look at the saddles. And she followed me inside. Well, we were alone, and she wasn't exactly dressed to go knocking around a barn. Sarah, it's not easy for me to describe how she acted. Well, I mean, it's not something that you'd want to tell a nun. Well, if anything, she came after me. And I may not have been as polite as I should have been, but well, I got out of there. The next thing I knew, her father showed up at the mission with the sheriff. Do you believe me, Sarah? You don't have to persuade me, Heath. I believed you before you began. Thank you. Does your family know that you've been arrested? Well, I sent them a telegram. And I'm sure they know by now. My brother Jared, he's a lawyer. He's one of the best there is. He should get this whole thing cleared right up. I brought you something. Here. There's some um, coffee and sandwiches and pickles and oh, some of uh, Sister Benedict's angel food cake without the halos. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> oh, it's nothing special. <laughs> it looks good. Sure you want to have some? No, thank you. Actually, we made that uh, same lunch for a man that they hanged two weeks ago. Poor fellow. Wasn't much for praying. Sure had a good appetite. <laughs> I'm serious. He... <laughs> really, it's awful when you think about it. He ate every speck. <laughs> really? <laughs> 
Jim, forgive me for making such a morbid joke. Are they hungry? I'm glad you came, Sarah. <laughs> I'll come again if it's all right. Well, I'd be mighty disappointed if you don't. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, what was so funny? I, I don't think I could begin to explain the term. <laughs> I'm not sure I understand it myself. Jacob, come in, please. Thank you, Mr. Roth. What can I do for you? I'd like to speak to Carla, please. Why do you want to talk to her? I'm a friend of Heath Barclay's. I've known him for many years. You, a nun? Well, I wasn't a nun when I knew him. I bet you weren't. Mr. Roberts, I would like to speak to Carla because I believe that, well, at least there's been a misunderstanding. Sister Jacob, why don't you go back to Sister Benedict? You remind her and yourself that your mission's on my property and that it's there by my permission alone. I can't see what harm can come from my talking to Carla. She's up in her room and she's not feeling well. Oh, I'm sorry. Perhaps I could come back later. That won't be necessary. Mr. Roberts, Heath Barkley is not the kind of man who could harm your daughter. Isn't he? We'll see what a jury thinks tomorrow. Tomorrow? The trial is tomorrow? That's right. But his family can't possibly be here by then. At 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, Judge Jonah Bailey presiding. <laughs> May God forgive you. What's the matter with you? Nothing, Homer. Just hope you're not pressing this thing too fast. You don't think my daughter's good name is worth it? Or that I'm entitled to some satisfaction from that stinking barnyard rooster who came to my home as a guest? And all I'm trying to say, Homer, is that it might be a good idea not to get too excited. Well, for Carla's sake, even. But Carla is a, a very high-strung girl. Isn't it possible that young Barclay didn't intend all those things that she might have well, imagined? What are you trying to say? Not a thing, Homer. I'm just making a suggestion. There was that other incident I recall some years back. A young fellow from Deadlock. That's I enough! Whatever you say, Homer. Better. I like to see the right man for the right job, Herb. That badge looks fine on you, Herb. Mm-hmm. I know, um, I know. It's all right, dear. They've all gone. Oh, Papa. I'd never manage without you. What did the sister want? Oh, some nonsense or other. It's not worth talking about. It was the young one, wasn't it? Yes, it was the young nun. Poor thing. What did you say? Poor thing, I said. Poor girl. I see her watching me all the time, and... Well, I can't help wondering what she may be imagining. They lead strange lives, don't they? You're trembling. I know. It's thinking about tomorrow, Papa. All those people in the courtroom and... and having to look at him. Carla. Yes, Papa. That... that thing with... Barclay, and you, that it was just the way you told me, wasn't it? You, Papa? You don't believe me. I believe you. I believe you. I, well, I, I, what I meant was that I, I just wanted to help. Forgive me. 
I never doubted you for a minute. I want you to know that. You want him punished, don't you? Oh, yes, Papa. I want him punished. I want that more than anything in the world. Sorry, sister, I didn't intend to take so long. That's all right. I understand. I went for a long walk. I was hoping I could think of some solution to this. I can't believe that they're going to hold Heath's trial tomorrow. Sister, do you think that he has any chance at all? With Judge Bailey presiding over a hand-picked jury? I'm afraid that Pontius Pilate, with a sword at his throat, couldn't serve the truth more wretchedly. They could take ten years of his life. I know. But I fear that this time, sister, there is no solution. Nor any remedy you can rely on. Except prayer. I wonder... What, sister? Heaven forgive me, I don't know yet. I wish I knew how to advise you. Suppose we have some tea. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. Left to myself, I'm apt to be such a fool. talk to you. Carla, come back. Carla. What's all the commotion? Your star witness was just gaping at me from the street. Carla? Oh, Sheriff, sure, you heard me. I wasn't whispering her name. You just never learn, do you? Learn what? To sit here and wait for a rigged up trial? There's nothing rigged up about it. Why don't you just relax? You're gonna have to be in that courtroom the first thing in the morning. Save your breath for the witness stand. Well, sister, you keep bringing my prisoner food every few hours. I'm afraid he's going to get too fat for his cell. Yes, that's a possibility, isn't it, Sheriff? Hey, be careful with that tape. No, I, I'm not doing this to be amusing. Would you drop your gun belt, please? Go on, you heard me, Sheriff. Drop it. Sir, are you sure you want to do this? Uh-huh. If you do, you're out of your mind. Sister, I'm warning you. Would you just get in the cell, please? Could you lock it here? Your meals are getting better. You'll regret this. All of you. Did you get the rig? Oh, in the livery stable. I hope you can pay for it when we get back. McAdoo! Somebody out there get McAdoo! Get him in here, fast! Now, no smart remarks, McAdoo, from you or anybody else. Barkley? Barkley, your tin badger was that nun. Like a Halloween witch with a gun in her hand. Sister Jacob? Her? So I said it was, didn't I? You men are hereby deputized. Don't you think we ought to tell Mr. Roberts? Well, let's hope we don't have to tell Mr. Roberts. Anyway, we haven't got time now.
road to the right. You know where we're going? Of course I do. Okay. coming out of the dry goods store. I saw him escape with that nun. She was in the carriage with him. Sister Jacob? Well, where was the sheriff? He was locked in the jail, someone said. I heard him shout until the men got there. Oh, Papa, I'm so scared. Oh, come on, Carla, there's nothing to be frightened of. Oh, I'm ashamed of being so scared, Papa, but I keep remembering what he tried to do. I can't help it. What if he comes here? He's going to be too busy running for his life. I'm going to hunt him down like a, like an animal. And that young nun, I'm going to put her in jail where she belongs. I think we're getting no place fast. Too much country to cover. I'm going to go back and organize some more searching parties. You fellows go ahead on your own. You can tell Mr. Roberts? Well, what else can I do? You just be glad you're not me. Why are we stopped? Rest the horse. Can't exactly say we lost him. Our problem is that we just haven't been able to find him. I got McAdoo. I don't want any of your smart remarks. I want Heath Barkley in that courtroom at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Either that or his dead body stretched out on the street for everyone to see. We'll have him there for you, Homer, if it's possible. You're gonna make it possible. Look, Homer, you can't hide a team of horses and a rig and a nun in full regalia like a, a, a silver dollar. It's dark out there. We've got a lot of country to cover. I want to have at least a half a dozen searching parties at work by daybreak. That's the only thing I know what to do. And then stop your talking. Organize your search parties. Here, I brought these men. Deputize them, use them as you need them. I'll pay their wages. You men are hereby deputized. I expect to use all of you, maybe a dozen more in groups of three and four. I'll let you know where I want you stationed at dawn. Well, you men can go now. We'll see you at daybreak. You warmer? Much warmer, thank you. Don't you think we should move on? Well, the horse can use the rest. So can you. Sarah, why are you taking this chance? I think that should be perfectly obvious. So you don't have to face Mr. Roberts' own judge and jury. I'll have you railroaded off to jail before your family can even get to Robertsville. You'll be safe at Paco's until they get here. But don't you realize they could put you in jail for helping a prisoner escape? Well, it was a matter of conscience. I hope. What do you mean, you hope? Well, it's, uh, it's often difficult looking back to be certain of any motive important or pity. Whether the thing that you did is really what you ought to have done, or is it simply just what you wanted to do. Being honest about those things is really what conscience is all about, I guess. You're not like anybody in the whole world, are you, Sarah? 
That could be a comfort to many. <laughs> My superiors in particular. Let's talk about you. Me? Yes, you. Last time I saw you, you were driving a stage. What happened after that? Well, I guess you might say things just went along for a while. I had some lumber and mining jobs. Did more than my share of herding cattle. Nothing exciting. Nothing for the history books. Main thing is I... I found a family. And learned how to belong. I guess you might say that was the biggest. The biggest and the best. I'm so glad for you, Heath. You could have been a part of it, sir. Ah, uh, that horse must be rested now. We better get started now. Just a coyote. Oh. Not as big as the sheriff, but better looking. <laughs> well, nothing like an unloaded coat for emergencies. Is this standard equipment for nuns? Well, sure, you don't think I could have used that on the sheriff if it was loaded, do you? I suppose not. We have a long way to go. We better get going, huh? <laughs> Heath, what is it? It could only happen to me. This is all right? Oh, yes, I know, Paco. Maybe he doesn't want to get mixed up with fugitives like us. This is Mission Country Heath. The sisters have worked here for 70 years. Hello? Anybody? Ah, there he is. Bienvenido. Paco. This is my friend, Mr. Barkley. He wants to stay here a few days. Bienvenido, senor. My house is your house. Thank you, Paco. That's very generous. But I think you should know that the sheriff is after me. And so we will hope he does not find you, senor. Please, sit. Sit down, sister. And let me fix you something to eat. Thank you. Well, let me put it this way, ma'am. If you do know where that young nun and Barkley are hiding out, and you're not telling me, well, you can just pack your mule and be off my property by this time tomorrow. I have no knowledge of Sister Jacob's whereabouts. But you do know that she's responsible for a jailbreak, don't you? And she'll be tried as a criminal, sent to prison just the same as him. Oh, God forbid such a thing, Mr. Roberts. But what kind of a person is she? Why would she run off with the likes of him? Well, answer me, ma'am. I am not prepared to answer you at the moment, Mr. Roberts. All I can say concerning Sister Jacob is that in the years I've known her as a postulant, a novice, and a duly professed nun, there has been no breach of discipline. She's been all that we might have asked. Well, you can be telling all that to a warden pretty soon. Did you break it? dropped a few beads. I manage to do that about once a month. Think your family will be arriving tomorrow? Well, if they caught that early train to deadlock, and got a fast team. Otherwise, it'll be day after tomorrow. Mm. Paco could find out for you. That'd be a help.
What do you see there? I was just thinking about things that probably would be better to forget. Like that picnic we never went on. Picnic? Four years ago, we had a date to go on a picnic. That was the summer you left. You do remember, don't you? Of course I remember. But we agreed that Valentine's Day is over for us. Well, I don't think it'll ever be over for me. Four years ago, I was in love with you. Stop it, Heath. And with all due respect to your vows and conscience, it still hasn't changed for me. I'm sorry. I hope so. In the future, let's be very careful that you keep these aberrations, let's say, to yourself. Heath, I want to make something very plain to you. I've dedicated myself to God's business. That's what I chose. That's what I want. It doesn't leave a gap to be filled. My only regret is that sometime I attend his business poorly. Or not as well as I'm able. Heath, I'm very fond of you. I'm not offended. That would be foolish. This fire was built some hours ago. Hey, Otto? What? Look at this. Three beads on a chain. What do you make of it? Well, it looks like part of a watch him call it a, a rosary. It's got to belong to that nun. If we look hard enough, we'll find buggy tracks. You better ride back to town, Combs. The way old man Robertson Fogarty been itching. They'll want to know about this right away. All right. You two, come with me. Paco's now. Well, I'm not complaining. They smell good. Well, thank you. They're almost done. Do you want to go outside and get Paco? Well, he'll be right back. He just went to get some water. Mm. Say, is there anything you nuns can't do? Oh, I can name about a thousand things, but we don't have time. Hey, would you get me those plates over there, please? Mm-hmm. Senor Heat! Senor Heat! Sister! What is it, Paco? Three men come. Forgive me if I've blundered you into this. I'm sorry. It's not your fault, sir. Look at that map. Go on, look at it. I got men everywhere. 
One thing about you, Fogarty, you never run out of the kitchen. Look, Homer, what do you want from all me? All right, Homer, what's this all about? Where's he? If I knew where he was, I'd have him roped like a calf. Or better yet, I'd have a rope around his neck. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Your brother escaped from this jail two days ago. Now he's running for help with some deluded nun because he didn't have the guts to stand for trial. What's he supposed to have done? He was arrested for attempted rape. I don't believe it. There must be some mistake. No. First mistake was made by me, letting that young whelp stay in my house. Victoria, I thought our family were friends. If you did, you're doing your best to change that. I'm doing my best to tell you that the girl was my daughter. You'll believe it when we catch up with him. You see him down on his knees to plead for mercy. I'd like to talk to your daughter. Oh, no, I'm not going to let you torment her, too, or invent some lies you to You know her. better than that. Don't get on your high horse with me, Victoria. Now you listen to me, Roberts, and I'm speaking as my brother's attorney. Before you choke on that bone of righteousness, suppose you tell me why you think Heath broke out of jail. Because he was guilty, of course, and he wouldn't stay in trial. And when is this trial scheduled to be held? It was scheduled for yesterday morning. Yes. Well, we only got the telegraph two days ago. Who was supposed to be here to represent him? Now, you listen to me, Barclay. This is my town. Your brother forgot it. You'd be wise to remember it. Your town. You were going to bring my brother to trial within 24 hours with a boot-licking judge and a hand-picked jury? Before we were able to get here? Why, Homer, why? What were you afraid of? Mr. Roberts, I think we picked our trail up this time. Why? About a mile west of Bradley Forks. I found this at a place where they stopped. Must have been the nuns. Couldn't possibly be anybody else's. Let's go. What are we waiting for? All right, let's Sarah, go. are you going to arrest my son or murder him at Homer Roberts' request? I'm going to do my job, ma'am. And what is that job, Sheriff? To uphold the law of this town or the sacred privileges of one individual? I don't like the way you're talking. I didn't say it to please you, Sheriff. And now I give you fair warning. I'm going to go out and find Heath. And if you're bent on murder, you're going to have to kill us both. Hold it, Barkley. Don't make it any worse, Sheriff. I'm not going to have him interfering with the law. What law, Sheriff? Hold it, Barkley. Throw him in his brother's cell. Come on. Head out. Just leave him sweat there for a while. He ain't going anywhere. 
Hello, Carla. I'm Victoria Barclay. I'm sure you must remember me. I used to come here when you were much younger, of course. I, I knew your mother quite well. I don't have to talk to you. I don't have to let you in the house. No, I suppose not. But I would like to know what happened. I already told my father and the sheriff. I don't have to tell anyone else. Carla, they've located Heath. Now, if there's been some misunderstanding... There's been no misunderstanding. Are you sure? They could kill my son, you know. It's not my fault what happens. He brought it on himself. I see. Strange, I've never known Heath to do anything like this. He... Well, he must have been terribly attracted to you. Wasn't he? I said I don't want to talk about it. And I don't have to. Was he in love with you? What do you think? I don't know. You are very attractive. Didn't he say so? You're making fun of me. Oh, no, no, Carla. Why would I do anything like that? Because you think you're so much. It's the same as he thinks he's so much. All right, Carla, what really happened? I don't like you, Mrs. Barkley. Now, you leave me alone. I don't intend to. I want the truth. Everybody else believes me. Everybody but you and that nun. Oh, yes, the nun. Now, who is she? Tell me about her. I don't know. Just a nun from the mission on our property. Probably Heath's style. Isn't that a strange thing to say about a nun? I don't know. Stop it or leave me alone. No, no, we can't stop now. Not until we know what's happened. Not until we know the truth. Not the things you dreamed about or wished would happen. Your father is out there now with men ready to kill my son because you lied about what happened. Why should I lie? I've got plenty of bows. You should see them all come courting. I don't need Heath. He was rude. I told him to stop. He became vicious. He, he deserves whatever he gets. Does he, Carla? Does he? And will you be able to live with yourself afterwards? He could have cared about me some. He could have tried. Is that what you wanted? No, I didn't mean it that way making me say things I don't want to say. And when he showed you he didn't care, isn't that when you lied to your father? Because you did lie, didn't you? It hurt so much not to have Heath's attention, you had to lie. I don't know. I don't know. It's all so confused. You and Papa. Papa. Maybe he thinks I should be a nun. Help me. Give up, Barkley! You don't have a chance! And we've got him pinned down. Go on in and get him. I just as soon have him dead as alive. Won't be that easy to get a clean shot at him. No sense rushing things, getting our own men killed. I'll give a hundred dollars for every bullet that's put in Barkley's hide.
you tried for murder in a court you can't buy off. Now, Carla just confessed to me she was lying. Nothing happened with Heath. You're lying now. You know that's not true. Carla is sick, Homer. She needs your help. You've known about it for years, but you've been trying to hide it from yourself. It's not like she says. Tell the man to keep firing. Sheriff, you talk to Carla. She'll tell you the truth. You'd say anything to help him. I'm sorry, Homer. This is as far as I go. I can't help you try to run a bluff any longer. Not at the cost of that boy's life. Combs! Come in over there. Hold your fire. You can go in now, ma'am. Hey! I'm all right. Thank God. The funny thing. Must be the company I've been keeping lately. I had the same thought myself. I don't think we'll have any further problems with Mr. Roberts. Poor man. He was here this morning. Even talked to building us a new school. Seems he had a very fruitful talk with uh, you gentlemen about things in general, and that subject in particular. I don't know which of you to thank more. Well, why not try me, sister, since I'm the more saintly member of the family? As a matter of fact, it's my example that we're all hoping Heath will follow. That's entirely true, sister. Well, this good man trips over his halo nearly twice a day. <laughs> yes, well, uh, maybe we better find Mother and get started. Yes. Goodbye, sister. Goodbye. Goodbye, sister. Goodbye. God bless you. <laughs> you planning another jailbreak? Oh, for heavens, no. We were just talking. She's really something. No argument from me. If you ever get up near Stockton, I expect you to look in on us. If it's at all possible. Sister, I'm convinced that nothing is impossible for you. Uh, Heath, I'm afraid that train won't wait. Sister? Goodbye. Goodbye, Sarah. Goodbye, Heath. You must have loved him very much at one time, didn't you? Yes, I did. What makes you think I ever stopped? but you're on private property. Well, am I now? Uh -huh. So who are you and what do you think you're doing here? Well, now, it's a private property. I never could believe the dear God intended for men to cut up this beautiful earth into parcels for themselves, holding in captivity all living creatures upon the same. So as to trespassing, there's no such thing. And I go where my foot leads me. 
which is according to the wind at me back. Mm, all right, stand aside. That I am. A lunatic. They locked me away for protecting eagles. For as any sane man knows, a thing of air and freedom must be killed. Well, that thing of air and freedom has been killing our sheep and chickens. I don't know what road you came in on, mister, but you better find that road and get. Surely you not be keeping the poor creature. That's worse than killing it. Let it go. Maggie, pick out your eyes. You got a horse? Horse. Just the rich who ride. A walking man is Patrick Madigan. Oh, tramp. Huh? From Canada to this beautiful valley, spoiled only by the presence of yourself. You walked all the way from Canada. There were times when it was necessary to swim. Git. Shall we have another go at it? You show your tail on this property again, and I'm sure we will. Private devil, and the two of you in the cage you built for him. Take this. It's good prime beef. Come on, take it. Oh, Audra, I wonder what we're going to think of Brother Nick with a face like a lace curtain. Nick, the book says he's supposed to be blindfolded at first. The book. And it also says each time he takes food from you, just as he swallows it, you're supposed to give him a certain whistle. Ah, how about turkey in the straw? <laughs> oh, now, will you two clear out of here? I'm trying to tame this bird, and I'm not getting any help from you. You're not getting much help from the bird, either. What is it, Mac? Did you post a notice in Stockton that we want to hire a dynamiter? No, we didn't. Now, listen, Nick, you're going about this all wrong. Yes, we did. What do you mean, all wrong? Well, there's a fellow out there claims to be our man. Well, in the first place, what you have to do is teach this bird how to read. What do you mean, advertise for a dynamiter? The mine, Sundown Hill. While your engineer friend's been poking around trying to make up his mind, I decided to go ahead and get a dynamiter. Do it my way. Now, Nick, you know you're never going to get the major to agree to that. Until we closed that mine, there was an accident for every pound of gold we took out of it. Now, we just don't need it. But it's there. So is the record. The record! 50-year-old record. 
They went out of their way. Where is he? Right outside. Take over. <laughs> Bear a bit on the handle like a good lad. Glory be. I told you to. my pleasure someday to open that hard head. Now it's business I'm on here. So if you'll just send out your foreman. Holy angels. Is it you I've come to see? If you're a dynamiter, why didn't you say so out there? I was otherwise engaged. You're a pretty good dynamiter? I have that talent. Where have you worked? Oh, well, this is my brother Jared. He's a lawyer. Oh, a lawyer now. Would you care to hear an opinion of lawyers and judges? Not particularly. Just nice straight answers. Where have you worked? Any mining. Well, now, isn't that where I got my training? Digging English coal to warm English noses. Well, that's very interesting. But what would you do about rocks so rotten that a mine had to be closed? Oh, and what's your religion? And how do you vote? And, and what's the fashion of your nether clothes? Now, is it a dynamiter you people want? I can sharpen a pencil with a stick of the stuff if my word's not good enough. Good day to you. No, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Charity's already here. Famous time. Uh, the least we can do is take him out to the mine, let him take a look at it, and then he can tell us what he thinks the chances are. All right, Nick, you do that. Then pay him for his time. All right, let's get out there. Well, I'll have a bite to eat first, if you've the good manners to offer it, and a drop to wash it down, and the shirt, for if I'm to dine, I'll not sit naked. And you might modify that master's tone in your voice. You've not hired a flunky. Air bubbles. Weak spots. The whole thing will come down and you just holler, won't you? You posted that warning? Here when we open the tunnel. Right. The look of Flanagan's donkey. Back. Slowly now. And don't touch anything. Come on. So special about Flanagan's donkey. Well, he'd browse the edge of the cliffs each and every morning, heedless of the danger. And then one morning, the cliff top broke loose and tumbled into the sea, carrying all. But was Flanagan's fortunate animal there? No. Correct. He'd eaten thistles and choked to death only the day before. Lucky. Some coal here and there, and a few lads dying of the consumption. It would be a mirror of my childhood. I've seen it. What do you say? A sensible thing to do? Leave it alone. Barkley! Barkley! Wilson! Barkley, where are you? Up here. I figured they'd drop the whole inside of this hill, compact it, and then start again from scratch, open-cut mining. Oh, the torment of the rich, to become richer. Ah, there we are. Yeah, told you we were here. Now, what's all this nonsense about a dynamiter? Patrick Madigan, Major Wilson, ex-British Corps of Engineers.
Madigan, eh? If there's a pimple on my nose, would you be kind enough to tell me? Madigan. Army? Not yours. Oh, yes. Ireland. Belfast. Or Dublin. If it is, I've not committed it to memory. I understand from Jared this man appeared out of nowhere, as it were. Came in answer to my notice. References? Recommendations? What papers establishing that he may be indeed trusted with dynamite? Haven't you heard? It's become an Irish specialty. Major, when I hire a man, I'm the one that fires him. No one else. You don't need a dynamiter at all. You could recut these passages, square timber them. You said that'd be too expensive. And at best would only postpone a catastrophe. Nick, this hill is unstable. Then why not my idea? I know, too risky. He says it's not sensible. Oh, but did I say I'd not be willing to try? Well, now, you sure change your mind quick enough. Well, now, it's no more sensible than it was before, but... Sensible is for the man who means to die in bed. A series of charges, each setting off the other, it would breach the walls, blow the overhead to dust, and down would come the whole interior, leaving not a space the size of an egg. What about the water? Well, now, that would be a problem for the engineer, but one that shouldn't be insolvable <laughs> with the application of a little ingenuity. It's getting a little stuffy in here. You're going to do it, with or without you. Very well. I shall return to the house and offer every sound reason for abandoning this mad project. And then offer to supervise it with a different dynamiter. Because if that chap is the man I believe him to be, your Mr. Patrick Madigan is a very violent man. And having him on your ranch would be like sheltering a time bomb. Kelly lay on his back, <laughs> and O'Brien crawled to him in the dark, and felt for a sign of life. Oh, Kelly, you moan. Kelly, my dear friend, I feel a wetness upon you. And just afraid I am to think of what it may be. Well, strike a match, whispers Kelly, and have a look. And O'Brien does, and Kelly asks, is it blood? Tell me the truth, O'Brien. Oh, blood it is, moans O'Brien. It's blood all over you, Kelly. Praise be, Christ, Kelly. I was afraid it was the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, Madigan. What kind of country is that Ireland place? Well, it's a land of the Leprechauns and the Kellys and the O'Briens and the Blarney Stone. <laughs> but that's not all there is. Oh, it is a land for poets to tell about, not a fool like me. Oh, it is the smoke of peat, and it's the slow creak of carts along the road, and the little Connemara ponies. Sweet land it is, though often sad. Oh, come on now, we'll have none of that. None of that blasted funeral music. Alive she is! Alive is Ireland! And what an only to be free! and suddenly it was 8 o'clock. Well, how are you, Major? Well, I'm not sure. We were just discussing Mr. Madigan. Isn't he the most amazing man? If he's not talking, he's dancing, and if it's not that, it's something else. He's like a runaway train. Well, I'm starving. I think I'll get something to eat. Don't forget to make the hood for that eagle, huh? First thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> yes, I must say I'm not entirely surprised that Audra and seemingly everyone else around here is captivated by his charm. They're all charming. All the terrorists in the Society of Fenians. And responsible for sabotage, arson, and the brutal murders of good British soldiers. Oh, thank you. Yes, Mr. Madigan is quite efficient at dynamite. He's bombing a Clerkenwell prison. The circumstances of his escape from England, devilish good demonstrations of that fact. But you're Mr. Madigan is guilty of treason against the Crown. Has he been tried? He 
You will be. Oh, well, maybe I misunderstood you. I thought I heard you say he was guilty. <laughs> well, perhaps that was a bit unfair, but he is a wanted man, Mr. Barclay. He's a rebel. You told me about his back. Surely that's proof enough. Proof? I'm sure he's been flogged. It's customary with these fellows, you know. No, I didn't know. Oh. It's the only kind of treatment a rebel understands, ma'am. Major, do you have any kind of official standing in this matter? No, but I am a British subject. And this man has committed crimes against the Crown. Ah, but that happened in your country, not here. But they are crimes. Seems to me that's a matter of opinion, Major, not fact. The law is a fact, Mr. Barclay, and breaking the law is a fact. Well, now, that's always highly debatable. You see, the fact is, Mr. Madigan is a political fugitive. He committed crimes in Great Britain, but they're not punishable in the United States. And so I've asked you to accommodate me. To, uh, shall we say, immobilize a, well, shall we say, a suspicious character until my government can arrange to have him return for trial. We can't do that. But my dear lady... Major, the day I find a name on our payroll that is spotless, that will be someone who hasn't lived very long or very much. People are hired for what we want them to do, and all we ask is that they stay clean here and give us an honest day's work for their wages. Now, you say this man, Madigan, is wanted, and will we be good enough to move him a few steps closer to the rope? Well, we call that bounty hunting, and the answer is no. But I've described bombings to you, treason. Those fellows are rebels. Well, that depends on which side wins, doesn't it? We call ours patriots. Nick, your revolution took place a hundred years ago. It was a revolution. Let me say, I... I understand your ideals. I rather admire them. But you see, the chap we're talking about is associated with riot, insurrection, property damage, and considerable bloodshed. And if my country wishes to try Mr. Madigan for his crimes, it will find a way to take him. Will it? It's a very old country, Mr. Barclay. And very experienced. Now, I'm, I'm sure that we're not going to let this affect our friendship in any way. Oh, I hope not. And that I may still look forward to supervising the work of the old mine. That's up to you. Thank you, my dear boy. Because I expect to find it most interesting. I can't offer you anything but my company. Madigan! Mac, know you're sleeping out here. What's wrong with the bunkhouse? Well, it's too crowded and I can't stand snoring, so I'll just take this barn and a little nest of hay. Major Wilson tells me that you've killed quite a few people with your dynamiting. Uh, not that I know of. Not that you know of! Well, now, I call that pretty careless. It's the way of the work. Well, you stay away from that kind of work while you're around here. And here's fair warning. If anyone gets killed on this spread, it better be you. We're gonna have an early breakfast. We'll get the wagon and go on to the stock and pick up the things you need. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, you do mean to tame him. Civilize him. Make him hunt coyotes instead of lambs and chickens. Oh, fine. And as everyone knows, He'll be much better than any of your traps and your rifles. He'll be much more useful trained than he is now. You take my advice, you stay away from those talons. Good night. And good night to you, sir. Useful. Not what you are. Oh, stop hating the man. Think how fortunate you are. A home to come to. Warm and dry. He'll feed you only the best. And he'll nurse you and hatch you and proclaim to the world how clever you are. How obedient. And what does he ask in return, this kind and generous man? Only that you take a master. 
That is such a small thing, you foolish bird. Take a master. You're quite a beauty, ain't you? Breakfast will be in 10 minutes. Well, do I have to wait for him? Or is there room enough on the stump for the both of us? Come on. Well, you've won the first battle. Hunger is a precious weapon, and it costs nothing at all. Ah, you sparrow! What do you think you're doing? Easy. Easy. That's it. Let that bird fly off with that hood on him, blinding him, and he'll starve to death. Why don't you come down out of the sky and start using your head? What? I'd change the habit of a lifetime. Oh, we'll have at it yet. It was written before we were born. <laughs> you fellas must be fixing to blow up the whole valley. <laughs> that would be against the law. Ah, oh, the times I would have become a church scorer for a little bit of this stuff. Oh, I'm sure you've been able to improvise quite effectively, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. And such an expert. Hardly needs me to help him measure fuse and count blasting caps. So if you'll excuse me, I have a bit of business. <laughs> Your business, do you? Here you are, sir. Oh, yeah. Let's see, British, British Embassy. Hey, reckon this town's getting important, huh? Let's see, uh, Hubert Wilson Major Rhett. What's Rhett? It means retired. Oh, yeah, sure. It, uh, uh, well, that'll be two dollars. There's uh, pencil and paper right over there, Mr. Uh, did you hear the story about the skin flint who uh, touched off the firecracker before Christmas Eve? Uh, no, wait, wait. What are you doing? And then he walked into the house and told his family that Father Christmas would not be appearing that year. For the truth of the matter was that the dear old gentleman had just been shot. Shot.
I've been to funerals where the hearse moved faster. <laughs> Hang on, boys! Hey, easy! This is dynamite! Well, then don't let it fall! <laughs> Terrible day for the English. <laughs> Clear the way! All right, it's good boys, over here. Boys, put it right there. Wet. Look bad. Produces hydrostatic pressure of water on the dynamite cartridge. Dear, dear. You see, when one plans a series of these, the idea of producing a progressively intensified shockwave, one of the dynamite charges fails to go off. Series is broken. Only parts of the interior will collapse, blocking off the parts that are not collapsed. Would I be detecting gas in here? Oh, Lord, considerable it is. Better break it off, boys. We'll clear it. Continue tomorrow. Now, what's the blather you're feeding the poor man? The charges I place go off. In wet boreholes? even under wet bridges. Well, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I have a ranch to run. You'll have to carry your little war on by yourself. You are the man I thought you were. Did you have doubts, indeed? You showed none in the telegram. A telegram? There. You think I sleep with an Englishman aware of me naked throat? Impudent. I can understand how you acquire those scars on your back. Scars? Hey, those are me medals! Oh, you Englishman. You don't see the humor in it, do you? I say medals. And you think, why not? It is where a slave would be wearing them on his back. Well, Patrick Madigan is no slave. My father and his father before him, they were your Irish footboys. They were your Irish slaves, not I. I never bent but to pick up a cobblestone. And when the redcoats rode in to burn our village, reprisal it was called, one of them came at me on a horse so tall, charging at a small lad with a stone in his hand. A traitor with a stone in his hand. And in the flat of that sword coming down on the lad's back, like a whip, a whip, till I lay in the mud and could not scream of the mud in my mouth. May my brain rot if I forget it. If I forget the salt tears of my mother burning in the wounds as she kissed him. Oh, what you've done to my land. What you do to us each black day. And do you think a million Patrick Madigans will not fight you if it means a million will die? Will we not blast your bridges and bomb your courts and kill your soldiers and spit into your hearts until we shake the roof tree of your world? Till out of fear and nothing else shall grant us our freedom. Freedom to do what? To break any law just as the thought comes to you? Destroy property, play with men's lives. A wagon loaded with dynamite. Just because you think that's what it means to be free. I came at you. Obviously. And the four men on that wagon. Did you think it right in the name of freedom to imperil their lives? I've seen men like you in the army. Violent, irresponsible, undisciplined. You're a man who must be ruled. And that's your answer, is it? to all the blood and the weeping and the ache in the heart of us. I'm not your judge. You'll have your day in court. My only duty is to send this telegram. You'll send nothing. 
and you'll say nothing. Stand aside. Now here's an Englishman without a whip, with not one soldier at the side of him. And here's Patrick Madigan, who bombed Clerkenwell Prison and Kilmainham Jail, and never felt the face of an Englishman against the back of his hand. the same, Mr. Madigan. You'll do better to change your dream. How easy that was, huh? You know what the trouble with you is? You just don't know. You're too used to being up on that mountain top, aren't you? Yeah. His master's voice. Did you just get in? Well, it was a slow ride in the dark and alone. You and the major still at odds? Well, not anymore. Good. A man came to the mine to see him, a stranger. They spoke a while and uh, then rode off together. Where? They neglected to confide in me. A stranger, what do you look like? Oh, two legs, two arms, a head. I was not close. Keep your hands off that bird. Well, he's yours. Now you're getting the hang of it. I wish I knew what happened to Wilson. Didn't say anything to you, huh? Well, a few things about my being uncivilized. And I believe I mentioned tyranny to him. Nothing about staying in town. Fed wasn't slept in last night. Well, maybe the man's leading a secret life. Wish you had a better look at that stranger. Well, it's this trouble with my tongue. It's so long it is, it steals the strength from my eyes. Back off to in such a hurry. He's going to get the sheriff, Vic. It's Wilson's horse. A sheep herder found him near the mine. Wilson, too. He's dead, Nick. Probably was an accident. He could have been thrown from his horse. On the other hand, it could have been. Could have been the stranger. Maybe. This was found on him. It's a copy of the telegram that Wilson was sending to the British Embassy. Madigan. Now, there's no proof of that yet. Well, it was Madigan. It's all my fault. Where do you think you're going? Just take one guess. And what will you do, Nick? Go out and hog time and bring him in? Just have some $2 lawyer cut him loose? Or maybe you'd like to string him up by his thumbs till he says exactly what you want him yes, to Yes, I just might do that. And that would be exactly wrong. Now, I say we play for time. 
You simply say that the Major was killed in a riding accident. Now, that'll give the Sheriff and us time to check around. If there was a stranger, believe me, he left a trace somewhere. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, what about Madigan? He's staying with us. He has to feel safe. And he could be innocent, you know. <laughs> Just be sure you keep a watch on that hair trigger of yours, Nick. Now, the Major was a good man and a good friend, but we don't want blood for blood. All we want is the one who did it. This trap ain't waiting for a little dynamite. Let's go. All right, get along, lads. I'll be right with you. It's all there in your eyes. You caught another eagle. Just keep your hands right where I can see them. We found the Major dead. Now, now, think a minute. It was not murder. And I can see that's what you're thinking. That's exactly what I'm thinking, and so's the Sheriff by this time. Now, are you gonna come peaceable, or you want me to drag you out of here? Barkley, your way is of persuasion. But Patrick Madigan is an eagle of another sort. And it's my home I prefer to go to, and not any other. What are you doing, The boss. Well, he's still in there. Dead? Well, if not, it's an ugly way to be going. Get the picks and shovels. Let's well, go. The shovel's not in a hundred years. Fuck, dick man, for what good it'll do. Come on with the shovels.
You hear that? He's still alive. Keep digging. You went for help. I've got all the help I need right here. All right, boys, take cover. Keep running. Do you want me to stop now and debate the foolish sentimentality of Patrick Madigan? Why worry any more about me than Wilson? Barkley, I could never stand by and let an animal be caged or a human being suffer in darkness. Now, you were trapped here without even a window to watch a flight of birds. And that's worse than any prison I ever occupied and hated. Uh, this maudlin talk is only tolerable with a tank and a three of beer, so let's get out of here. I've developed a savage uh, thirst. Uh, now, listen, Madigan, you let it. Uh, oh, I thought I'd humble myself, but all right, I'll carry it. you tell us what happened. You'd never believe it. Try us. Patrick Madigan is not going to hang or be put in a cage. No!
just a piece of wood. That's all it is. Just a piece of wood. I wonder what it feels like. I kind of know how it feels. 